So a couple of months ago Jurassic World Rebirth came out and of course like every other Jurassic movie we got a new big bad, the D-Rex. And while it looks awesome, there's more to talk with its design. Now don't get me wrong though, it looks cool on screen, makes for great toys and figures, but it just feels too fantastical if you know what I'm saying. Honestly, if you drop this thing to the Godzilla universe, it would make sense. And yeah, I get it, Gareth Edwards directed the first 2014 Godzilla movie, so the D-Rex ended up with the same kind of vibe. But here's the thing, the D-Rex isn't supposed to be a kaiju, it's supposed to be a clone. A failed genetic experiment, it wouldn't come out looking like a polished apex predator as if it was made exactly the way it was meant to be. The balanced limbs and perfect symmetry might work for cinematic aesthetics, but in reality, a failed clone would be messy, uneven biological mistake. So today I'm going to explore a few redesigns of what the D-Rex could look like if we lean into that idea instead of the Hollywood version. But first, I'm going to set up some rules. Now, I don't want to make it too grounded because if that were the case, the D-Rex wouldn't even exist in this universe. It still needs a bit of a fantastical elements into it. Think of it like the Dark Knight level of grounded. Realistic enough to feel believable, but still allowing things that couldn't happen in real life to exist. What kind of accident would I see floating in that tank? Like the kind of misfire that was never meant to survive, but somehow did. That's the fun part for me. I didn't want to just say, oh yeah, let's make it scarier. No, I wanted to ask myself, what does an accident of nature actually look like? So with that in mind, let's dive into the first design. The defective clone. What happens when the DNA errors stack up and nature glitches out? The D-Rex in the movie already emphasized this concept, but if you look at real-life genetic mutations, whether in reptiles, mammals, or even fish, they tend to have extra limbs, missing joints or weird body parts that forms randomly, not evenly. Nature doesn't line things up neatly, it just glitches. So in my version, the defective clone grew with misaligned bones, uneven muscle distributions. I'm also taking a few references with some of these dino arts as an inspiration of what it could look like. Man, these are so cool. I also had a lot of fun designing this one because I could literally add a bunch of extra limbs and stack them on, making it look like a failed experiment. I also purposely made the proportions uneven, the body slouches forward with uneven shoulders, there are arms showing in random parts, one arm is gigantic and enormous, and I still wanted to pay homage to the original D-Rex design. The legs don't match in strength, giving it a lopsided unstable posture. Even the skull tilts slightly, pushing one eye higher than the other, like the face itself was stitched together incorrectly, adding to the unsettling quote-unquote glitched appearance. And of course, it needs its own name, not just Distortus Rex, but something that still carries the D-Rex initials. I'm thinking of the... Diddy Rex? <laughs> I'm gonna call this one D Tyrannus Rex. It means deformed king or degenerated king. So for the second redesign, I wanted to explore what happens when the patchwork DNA really takes over. In Jurassic World movies, they used frog DNA to fill in the gaps. But what if, instead of being subtle, those traits started competing with the avian genes. So what we end up here is a hybrid that's not fully dinosaur anymore. It's part bird and part amphibian. Why bird, you may ask? Think about it like the dire wolf cloning project we've seen in real life. Scientists aren't really bringing back the dire wolves, but they're editing modern wolf DNA to imitate what's extinct. It looks similar, but it's never truly the same animal. Now, the closest living relative to a dinosaur is apparently a bird or avian, and that's why I'm trying to combine these to create some sort of an abomination. At first, I really struggled with this design, because how do you even combine a frog and a bird to something that still feels like a dinosaur? Eventually, I drew inspiration from those outdated T-Rex reconstructions with awkward heads, and I pushed it further, a wide frog mouth like that opens unnaturally, with retractable teeth like Toothless from How to Train Your Dragon. The bird traits shape its body into something lean and twitchy, while the DNA of the frog creeps through in strange ways. Webbed toes, bulging throat sacs, and slimy sheen across its skin. You know who else has slimy bulging sacs? <laughs> at first glance, it looks like a dinosaur, but the longer you look at it, the less it feels like one. Its DNA doesn't evolve in a single direction, it splits, diverging into two paths that were never meant to merge. Bird and a frog stitched together into one abomination, so that's why I call this one Divergenics Rex.
For the third redesign, I initially wanted to make a D-Rex that is a completely failure, like its body started breaking down literally. So the concept is like a necrotic version of the D-Rex, but then I kind of realized that I would just end up making a zombie T-Rex, and that felt kind of boring, you know? So instead, I changed the concept entirely. Now instead of breaking down like a corpse, this D-Rex never actually finished throwing up. What we get is a case of neoteny, where juvenile traits are locked in, but the body keeps getting bigger. So, imagine a baby T-Rex, scaled up to a kaiju size, distorted and unnatural. In real biology, you see this in animals like axolotls and salamanders that stay in their larval state in their entire lives. So now I can be quite experimental with the body shapes. I also took inspiration from Shin Godzilla's second form, so you could probably see where I'm going with this. The Neontenic Rex ends up with huge, unblinking eyes, a shorter rounded skull, and pudgy limbs that can't really carry its own weight properly. It stumbles forward like an infant trying to learn to walk, except this infant is like 1000 kilograms. It's unsettling not because it's powerful or terrifying in the usual sense, but because it feels like a mistake that just kept on growing. And of course, I have to give this guy a name. Because I took inspiration from Shin Godzilla, I wanted to give this guy a Japanese name. So I call this one Doji Rex. Doji means child in Japanese, so it translates to child Rex or boy Rex. So yeah, that's my take on the D-Rex. Not as clean as the Hollywood Kaiju version that we got, but through these redesigns, we end up with three very different interpretations. The chaotic glitch of the Tyrannox Rex, the unstable hybrid of Divergenix Rex, and the unsettling eternal child of Doji Rex. Each one shows a different path that the DNA could have taken, and honestly, this is the best that I could do. Now I'm sure there are even crazier directions out there that I could think of, but that's what excites me the most, seeing how one idea could branch out into such unexpected results. Now most of you are probably seeing this channel for the first time, and that makes sense. It's been almost a year since I uploaded a video, and back then my content was pretty different. Most of what I made were short animation showcases, and honestly, a lot of the audience are probably young kids or probably toddlers. But with this new direction, I want to try something different, adding commentary, diving into redesign, and exploring creative ideas instead of just showcasing animations. With that said, I'd really like to know what you think. If you had the chance to redesign the D-Rex yourself, which directions would you take? Or maybe you'd come up with a completely different kind of accident in the lab. And if you made it this far, consider subscribing because, you know, it really helps a lot.